Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Robert Ortega. I'm the Director of Transportation Planning and Development for the El Paso District, Texas. Um, so, Marlo did a really good job of doing a deep dive in what, or what he's looking at, his office is looking at in terms of operation. So, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and provide a little bit more of a general text out update for you all. Okay, so this first slide here, uh, if you're not all aware, but we do have a project tracker and I have a link there for you. Um, you can easily search any section, you know, um, of the state and what projects are ongoing from from a two-year construction standpoint to all the way to a 10-year and to a corridor study standpoint. So it's really good. A lot of good information is in fact can be found in the project tracker. So I do really highly encourage uh, the use of this link here. Okay, next question. I'm here on Rifton, at the corner of Rifton and Horizon Boulevard. And I've been here a long time. It's taken me at least at least 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes at least, to get from the tennis courts of the high school behind me, which is probably a quarter mile away or an eighth of a mile away, just to get to this stop sign. And this is every day that school ends. It just gets jammed up real bad. This is Joe. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Madrid. Yes. Hi, my name is Andre. I live in Horizon City. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, I just had a, a brief question regarding the um, the Horizon Boulevard construction project uh -huh. uh, in in Horizon City. Um, are you familiar with the area around the Horizon High School? Uh, yeah, kind of near Ascension, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, between Walmart and Ascension is the Horizon High School. Okay. Uh, so there's a subdivision of houses, which uh, is it, designated by the town of Horizon as the Desert Breeze subdivision. That's where I live. And okay. it's all the, yeah, all the houses that are next to the uh, Horizon High School. And... Um, because on the other side of the Horizon High School, it's just like a water treatment facility. So there's a neighborhood that's by the Horizon High School. Anyway, long story short, uh, the road going into the subdivision is called Rifton, Rifton Court. And okay. so Rifton Court makes a, uh, a T-style intersection with Horizon Boulevard. Yes. And my question is, do you know of, or would you be able to find out for me, if the Texas Department of Transportation has any plans to build a traffic uh, light, a traffic signal at that intersection? No, um, we don't have any plans in the immediate future. That hasn't popped up as a need just yet, but I mean, we can always do the count and try to see when it starts to warrant. Um, that's definitely something we can add into our, into our queue to um, just um, study the actual intersection. And we can start performing the counts and see how how the traffic data correlates to whether it needs to signal or not. Is there a, a safety concern? You're asking me if there's a safety concern? Yeah, yeah. Is that where where, where your um, question came up? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that my my issue is a safety concern. I'm sorry, I'm getting uh, some dust in my here, I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah, it's not exactly a safety concern. It's more of a traffic congestion issue. It's in okay. the afternoons. There's only one time of the day I ever have a problem with this intersection, and that is on weekdays when school lets out mm -hmm. um, between, I guess, maybe 3.30 to 6 p.m. during that time period. It just, it really bottlenecks bad. It's like, and now with the construction, it's even worse. But even before the construction started, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you have dozens and dozens of school buses all coming out at once. Then you have uh, the teenagers that can drive. They're all coming out. Um, so basically, long story short, 
it gets so bad, just to give you a picture, that the, the congestion on Rifton and on Horizon Boulevard, uh, especially, but also on Rifton is so bad that people will be sitting at a standstill and some will just literally just turn their wheel and turn around after waiting for like 10, 15 minutes just sitting in traffic. Um, mm -hmm. Just even trying to just even to get to the intersection. Like, yeah. uh, it's like after my subdivision every afternoon during the weekday um, because, and it's, it's not like I have anybody I can point the finger to because I mean, the school's going to do what it does. But it's the same thing every time. So I just feel like that traffic light, if there was one built at that intersection, that that would alleviate uh, a big part of the problem because what happens is, is that all the people coming down, I don't know even know where all these cars are coming from, but there's this massive amount of cars that keeps coming down from that Agadulce area from Ascension. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, they come down and nobody ever wants to uh, let anybody in. So the people on Rifton, they're always trying to like creep in when they get a chance, but it just gets all bottlenecked. And uh, you, you, you can picture what I'm telling you is that. Yeah, yeah was, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you and, know, uh, um, for, for this area, we do have planned to install a signal at Ascension. That's, that's actually planned um, for a couple of years from now, but um, we can definitely add rift into the study just to start looking at this intersection. We'll perform a study to the traffic counts, kind of see what the needs are, and that kind of points us if it even warrants for a signal yet. And after we do the whole study, and if it if it does meet for a warrant, then we got to start looking for funding, start justifying it through safety, and start going that route. So that's kind of the the process that we're going to take. For so um, we'll put it on the queue to study the intersection, and we'll start counting. Yeah, um, a traffic light at minimum would be great. Um, and I'm no architect or, you know, Texas Department of Transportation guy, so I'm just taking a wild guess here. But if you guys could also possibly build any specialized, um, like, traffic light or signs for when the school lets out, because basically the crossing guards, they come out and they stop everything and then they let all the buses out. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of buses. But um, I noticed that when I drive past the other schools, like the middle school and the elementary school, they have it set up so that there's like these temporary signs and I think even lighting fixtures for that when school lets out, all that stuff activates. And they have like, um, like specialized crosswalks already set up and everything. I just feel like the the whole area in front of the Horizon High School is just like a regular highway. Like, it's like they never expected to have all these people coming out of school every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like it's not even set up, you know? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what infrastructure is going to come in with that with that construction project that is on horizon. Um, I remember the limits do going through this area, so they may be addressing some of that area. I remember seeing even items for like the for the, for the um, school zone. So there may be some improvements to the school zone itself, but um, I'm not sure of the details at the top of my head because I didn't work on that project. Okay. Um, so um, in, in another thing to consider as well, it's going to factor into the study, just to give you a heads up, now looking at this, is that East Lake should be signalized, right? It should have signals there off of East Lake. Oh, and that's great. But East Lake, that really, you know, not to be selfish or anything, but East Lake, you're talking about the intersection of East Lake and Horizon, right? Yeah. So that factors in, like, how, how close an interse another, another intersection is with the signal. That's part of the decision as well for the design. So um, that's going to be factored in there as well, just a heads up, and especially rifting. It's kind of pretty nearby within probably a, a third of a mile, maybe, around there. Um, oh, I know, but and I hate to interrupt, but the problem is it gets so congested that just to get from Rifton, that intersection of Rifton and Horizon, just to get from there to the mm -hmm. intersection of East Lake and Horizon in the afternoon time, like I'm talking about when school lets out, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's just a third of a mile. It gets so congested. I will sit there sometimes, like, you know, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. I'm not even joking. It gets really bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that. That's a fact for sure because sometimes when you put signals that close together that are experiencing that kind of accuse, it doesn't. It, it makes the problem worse sometimes. 
So um, well, no, no, there is no, there is no signal rifting. It's just a no, no, regular. No, I understand that. That's what, that's what I'm telling you. Like that, that's part of the analysis when we're when we're considering traffic signals. Apart from the traffic data itself, is is are there signals nearby? Um, is it a school zone? Is it not? Um, those are all things that play into the decision. Just a heads up. Okay, and I and I'm, I'm not even going to try to pretend to be some sort of you know, architect or government official. I'm just giving you my input as just an average daily driver. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know what you guys can do because you guys are the people with all the big brains and that's your job. I'm just telling you that what is the reality on the ground right now is that I literally cannot do my daily stuff in the afternoon. I am trapped. It's regularly. If it was a one-time thing, I wouldn't even be calling you. But this is mm-hmm. over and over, like every time. If it's like 4 p.m. and I'm trying to get out of my subdivision, I already know what's going to happen. I'm going to be literally stuck trying to get out of my own neighborhood. This is really bad. Okay. No, no. We'll, 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 we'll definitely start taking a look at this, sir. Okay. Um, do you mind if I get your email just so I can stay in touch with you? Sure. Sure. It's, um, it's going to be Jose dot Madrid at txdot.gov. Okay, and um, let me, just so I can double check, uh, that's J-O-S-E dot M-A-D-R-I-D? Yes. Uh, and then you said at the app symbol? T-X, yes, the app symbol, and then I'm T-X-D-O-T dot gov, G-O-V. Gotcha, Okay. Um, yeah, I really appreciate, I know you're a busy man and I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Um, this is something that, uh, has been going on for many months now. Um, just a little information about me. I've lived here, uh, in Horizon City since December of 2007. So I've watched the town grow and, um, all the way many years ago when I moved here, this is not a problem that I ever dealt with because traffic was nothing like that back then. So I've seen how, as the years go by, this has gotten worse and worse. So that's why I want the calls, because I know that it's only going to get worse. You know, that's the biggest problem. This, as bad as it is today, I can only see it getting worse. <laughs> well, so. well, it's definitely growing, that's for sure. I'm, I live kind of close by in the area. I'm over there by Paseo de Leste. Uh-huh, yeah. So, so yeah, I kind of travel down to to this area, Horizon, for all the for all the stores that are nearby, and that, it's it's definitely grown real fast in the last couple of years. That's for sure. I mean, even just as one example, one quick example, I'll let you go. But even just the dollar store that I go to at the corner of Ascension and Horizon Boulevard, mm-hmm. overnight they're already building something right next to that dollar store. That's just one example <laughs> of how fast things are growing. I don't That's even know true. what it is. Yeah, but it looks like there's something else popping up right there. So. The traffic's only getting worse, and that's why I really feel, in my opinion, just Joe Blow, just regularly Joe Sixpack, average daily driver, I feel like there should be a traffic light at Ripton and Horizon because, like I said, the people on Horizon, they act like they're the king, which, you know, honestly, if I was on Horizon, headed down Horizon, I would also probably act the same way because Mm -hmm. once you try to let somebody in, everybody behind you, they get really impatient. They start honking at you. So that's another reason the people on Horizon Boulevard don't want to let anybody in because that's exactly what happens is all the people behind you all start honking at you. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the, tra- the traffic light is a necessary evil, in my opinion, because the people on Rifton, we can't get out. The Horizon traffic just keeps coming and coming. It's just you have to be there, but you can picture it. It, it gets bad. Yeah. Okay, we don't yeah. know. We really appreciate the 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 cost, sir. We'll definitely start um, the process over from the start of, and and start seeing if it's going to be required just by the data itself. Okay. Um, in addition, I'm going to be going to the town of Horizon City Hall. I spoke to the director. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, he actually gave me your number. Um, okay. Do you happen to remember his name? I can't remember his name. Um, we got several directors here. If he was from, I'm assuming it might have been Raul Ortega. Was it him? No, no, no. This is for the town of Horizon City. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we work with each other for sure. 
Yeah, so that's where I'm going to um, do something formal. I mean, I know obviously this phone call is an important first step, but I'm yeah. actually going to do something formal in writing. There's actually a request form that I could submit to the town of Horizon City, which uh, he said that will then be passed along officially to the Texas Department of Transportation. Uh, you know, um, if you want to su submit this straight through um, the, the um, text pod itself, we do have our own page where you can send this exact request, and it's got to go through the public, um, through the open records, uh, the public um, star request. So then that, I think that's the best way to do it if you want to make it um, to, to, to a level of formality. That way it doesn't go from Horizon to us. You can go directly to TechStot. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, um, guys. If you want to email me um, kind of with the request, and I can forward you, um, like I send you the actual link, where where you, you would su submit that, and once it gets submitted through there, then it goes through our internal process of of um, what we got to respond back and the action that's got to be taken and all stuff like that. That's probably probably the best way to do it if you want to go formal. Yeah, no, that that sounds even better. I'm glad that I brought that up so that you could give me that information. That'll make things more efficient. For sure. Um, but again, I know you're a busy man, and I really appreciate you taking the time. It's it's about 15 minutes for this phone call. So I really appreciate that, and uh, I will stay in touch by email. Um, you know, I'll send you an email. That way we can uh, lock in each other's email addresses, and we'll go from there. But uh, uh, for right now, I'll let you go, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to hear my issue. For sure. Anytime. Have a great day, sir. You too. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.